So welcome to the Tea House Chat and welcome Leah and welcome uh, Iris, I think the other one, Leah and Iris, well, welcome to the Tea House Chat. <clears throat> so today we're chatting about, um, people quite often ask me, can you, um, can people steal your energy? And, and it's a common thing to talk about that and sometimes we talk about um, massage therapists or things like that who said that, you know, after they massage somebody, they feel like they're, they're drained and the other person's got all their energy and they feel like they've drained, their energy's all drained out. And they ask me, how do the people, you know, steal your energy or how do people take your energy? And so we'll, we're going to talk about that. Before we do that, though, I'm going to pour you a cup of tea. So welcome to the Tea House Chat. I'll pour you a cup of tea. I know you can't have it virtually, but we're going to pour you one anyway. I'll pour you a glass because it's the right thing to do. So here's your cup. And cheers. <laughs> cheers for the chat. Thank you. <laughs> I know you can't virtually have it, but just I, I do it generously give it to you. I'd, I'd love for you to have it for me, Peter. I am. Thank you. And it's yeah, delicious excellent. too. So I just <laughs> want to tell you that. So, so, so I actually, it's not, it's not green tea because I'm, I'm not a caffeine person. So it's not green tea. Normally you'd have, of course, green tea with this as uh, traditionally in China. But because I don't eat caffeine, it's not, it doesn't have any caffeine. In it. So I've actually got Rosella tea today. So I have different flower teas and things, but this is what this one is anyway. So welcome to the chat. So the, the subject we're talking about, and then I just see Kerry's arrived. Well, welcome, Kerry. So the chat about can people steal your energy? And so that's the, the, the thought. So in Chinese medicine, that can't actually happen. They, nobody can take your energy off you. Your energy has got your own signature to it. And your energy comes from the food, of course, the food you eat and from the air you breathe, and it's converted into energy into your own Yuan Qi, which circulates through your body and makes all the function part of your, all your organs and all your heart and your lungs and makes everything function to allow you to be alive and be a live person on the planet walking around with a functional body and consciousness. And so that allows you to do that. So the idea of if you massage somebody or you treat somebody and all of a sudden they got all your energy and you feel really, really tired is they, as I say, they can't actually take your energy from you. But what you can do is you can react to their energy and you can react to anybody. And at reaction can, to, can use your chi. They can't actually draw it off you. It's like you can draw blood off somebody, but you can't draw chi off you, but you can give your chi away. You can give it away by reactions. You can give it away by um, energetically projecting energy into somebody else and it's coming from you as such. And you can give it away, but they can't take it. They, you actually have to give it away. And you can do that by when you're doing energy work is by thinking that you're giving them your energy and you're giving you it. Well, well, you can do that. Your energy, of course, is going to make their body's energy react because their energy and your energy is different. And you can lose energy that way, but they can't actually, by you just treating them, take it off you. In theory, when you treat somebody energetically, you're connected to heaven and earth through, in Chinese medicine, through your head string, through your connection to heaven, and your earth through your feet. And when you're doing energetic healing or energetic clearance with people the energy is coming from exterior it's coming from exterior through you into the person so it's not actually using your energy at all your your sourcing your divine energy is not from you it's coming through you and you're just the vessel to to help that energy happen and the same with acupuncture when i put needles in people it isn't coming from my energy it's coming i connect the energy to the energy of yang or yin depending whether the yin or yang depleted and I'm connecting the little antenna like a little, and it's bringing energy from outside into that point to balance the person. But it's not coming from me. I would, I wouldn't want to get in the road of that because you don't want my my chi is such, nothing, nothing's anything wrong with mine. But my intention, as you get my intention, creates what happens inside your body. But the energy is not coming from me. You just get my intention. Now, intention is a form of energy, but it's not my yuan chi energy. It's 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 a difference. It's the practitioner's intentions and energy's difference. It's called Yi. It's got its own name, but it's not Yuan Chi, which is my life force. So it's a different thing. So you, you'll give it, you can give them that, 
which is your intention, and they get your intention, but their intention is not going to fill them up. The intention is going to help change what's going on inside their body with my intention. But the energy that it's going into their body to do that is not coming from me. It's coming from heaven and earth through me, through the other person. So all I'm doing is I'm getting the power and I'm redirecting it inside the body where the body needs it, but it's not my power. It's not my energy I'm using. I'm just using my intention and my knowledge of medicine and understanding where energy flows in the body. And I'm using that to, to drive things around inside the body. So I'm doing it quite differently. And so I'm not involved in that only my, with my intention of how I want it to happen. So I think that's probably the first part of it. Anyway, we'll, do, we'll I'll leave it at that for the moment. And you can ask me questions around that about how traditional Chinese medicine sees that or any other questions around that you're very, very welcome to ask. Yeah? And what you could do also is you can, um, if you have a question, just put your hand up. I don't know if you, if you know how the Zoom works or you can just put down, you see the reaction button down the bottom of your Zoom page. You push Zoom reaction. There's a little hand that says, put your hand up and just push that button and a hand will appear here so I can see you have a question and I'll ask you yes it's okay so does anybody have any questions around where I'm up to so far with that to understand the principle of that and how that works inside our body energetically and how you can and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can preserve your reaction to the other person too because that's another thing and how you can stop responding in a certain way which is using your energy up to respond to them but we'll get to that secondly anybody have any questions about how we're using energy from outside of ourselves to help people if we're um, doing any form of medicine or any form of energetic healing or any form of energetic transfer transferring of energy through to, from somebody else any questions about that yeah yeah peter i have a question good go um so i am a massage therapist and i've noticed over the last six months there's a couple of clients that i massage that after i've massaged them I'm physically bloated and I'm wondering, yeah. is that a way of me taking on somebody else, like the client's energy, for example, instead of transmuting that through? I, I would imagine that it's not so much, it's not so much theirs because they might not be bloated, but I'd imagine what's happening then with the interaction with yourself and them is creating that reaction inside your body. So it's useful to you because you then you've got to ask yourself, okay, so what's bloating? What causes bloating in Chinese medicine is to do with the liver and the liver being out of function. So something could be reacting inside your body that's creating this bloating experience. And that's that's coming because it's triggering some sort of liver response that's going on inside you. It could be the person that's triggering it or it's something to do with the person. If the person has um, liver, liver conditions or anything to do with being grumpy or having a liver imbalance, what it can do is trigger your own one without you knowing it because their liver energy is, is reflecting on your liver energy and so you're reacting to theirs and it's creating a reaction. So it's just really useful because then you won't know this is going on, but this reaction is give, it's pointing at it. So part of that will be okay. um, the bloating thing is the, the liver thing. So that's sometimes it's got to do with the spleen because the liver is affecting the spleen. So you're going to question now your own self about your own liver energy and about the spleen because, there it's, as I say, it's pointing to that. It's giving you an indication there's a yeah. dysfunction happening inside yourself that's just by itself, you don't notice it. But when it comes in condition with somebody else that's got a liver, it's amplifying it for you. So you get to see it as useful because it's pointing at something that's happening on a low, low level inside yourself. So you get a chance to change that. And you buy that by rectifying or, or regulating your own liver and regulating your, your because the liver likes to go to the spleen, which interferes with all the digestive function. By regulating your liver and your spleen, then you'll find you won't react to this person at all. It's just something that's happening. It's, uh, it's like um, if somebody's really hot, um, if, if, you know, if you have a, a partner or a, and you, you lie beside the partner, if they're really hot, then you lie beside them, you touch them, and now you're going to overheat as well because it's going to trigger you. And all of a sudden, now you're super hot. If you're a cold person and you're beside a hot person, you'll like holding on to them because they'll warm you up. So that's a very different thing. So they'll feel good. But if you're already hot and you touch a person that's hot, this is going to overheat you really fast. 
And that's pointing at your heat problem that you've got because you're getting more of what you've got. So the bloating is, the, is, is not the bloating so much that they have, it's the liver thing that's going on that's triggering your liver thing that's because it's actually amplified at your ability to see what it is. It's just useful. And if you've got more than one patient, then there's, they're both triggering the same response that's happening. And I'll say, if you, <clears throat> if you want to, I can put up try, um, liver, liver herbs. You can take to regulate your liver. It'll be something like that. Or you can go to an acupuncturist and get your pulses read and they'll be able to work out what that is. And it'll be a relationship between your liver and your spleen. Now, where the where the liver disturbance, only you will know that with that because this is not a diagnostic session. So you you can find out how that is affecting how your liver's been affected because something in your life that's creating that. It could be a, a it could be a food thing, it could be a stress thing, it could be an emotional thing. Any of those things could re affect and affect your liver that's creating the digestive dysfunction. Now, my question would be, without doing a diagnosis, do you have, besides having any bloating, do you have any stomach things going on already and the bloating is just happening outside of that? That would be the question. I don't want to do a full diagnosis, but I just want to, just so that people can hear this, so they can see with your own self, yep. with an example. I've, so, got, I've got a sluggish digestive system. Very good. So there you go. So that's... That's a already, already pre-existing. Digestive yeah, so, system. So the people are they're triggering that. It'll it'll be because it's already there. Your your digestive thing that's the slug you said sluggish digestive. Yeah. So it's not functioning one hundred percent like Thank it you. should be. And what's <laughs> happening is their their energy or their energy and such is triggering your liver energy, which is pointing at the thing that's the the sluggish thing and bloating is part of that. I'd, it'll be something like it'll be something really simple like that. It won't be anything outside of that. Only it's pointed at your own thing that's going on. And as I say, go to an acupuncturist or go to somebody. Or just, I can give you if you want to message me outside of here. I can give you a Chinese herbal formula that's that's generic. That's really good for your liver. And you'll find when you do that, your whole digestive system could change. There's a couple of good ones for your tummy as well, depending where you are in the world. Okay. And I can suggest you can take formulas for that if you if you don't know of any acupuncturist or a yeah. Chinese herbalist, and they'll they'll do that. They'll help regulate that for you. And you you'll find that'll go away, and it'll stop. You'll stop having that reaction. It'll be something like that, anyway. Thank you. That's um, yeah, that's huge. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I love it. Chinese Chinese medicines. You know, 3,000 years of understanding how this works, and they're very clever at understanding all the different symptoms. There isn't any symptoms you can have as a human that, that Chinese medicine don't, doesn't know who owns that and who the relationship is with that symptom and other people. And by asking other questions, you can work out who's playing with who and who's interfering with what organ system, and, and they can work out. It's very clever. It's clever, but in some ways it's really simple. But it's just clever that it all fits together. There's no isolated symptom that doesn't or somehow related to something else somewhere in the body that's creating it. And this is this person's, they're actually really useful to you because they're actually pointing at something you need to change because you don't want to have digestive problems. You can you can resolve that. Yeah. Yep. Something like that anyway. Hopefully that's useful okay. to you anyway. Very. Yeah, very welcome. Nice to, nice to meet you. Yeah. Cheers. I just gave us some more tea. Everybody else, I poured you a cup of tea. The people have just arrived. I poured you a cup of tea. Cheers. Oh, that's yummy. Any more questions? Any more questions for me on this, this Saturday afternoon here in Bali? It's hot and steamy here today. It's such a great day. No more questions. Quiet day today. Fair enough. Hello, Judy. I just see, see you there at the bottom. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome to the tea house chat. Hi, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, you too. It's great. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, please ask. You're very, very welcome. So yeah, I was I was just thinking, I um I went to a workshop um a couple of weeks ago and um it was about body work and mm. it sort of you know the person demonstrated what we needed to do and we had to do it on somebody else and the person that I did it on you know I'd actually spoken to that person before we 
went to the workshop. I didn't know the person, and um, had a lot. That person had a lot of baggage, a lot of negative energy, etc. And mm -hmm. when I came out of the workshop, um, I I just had this overwhelming negativity, you know, and um, it was it was really odd and. I, I'm just wondering whether I took on board that person's negativity or whether I was just negative about the whole thing or, you know, I'm not could quite. Be a, could be a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but normally, so you, you, won't, you won't take on her negativity. Her negativity triggers the underlying negativity in your own body because it might be lying dormant. There might be a little bit of negativity. But when you get a lot more piled on top of it, it's going to, yours is going to react to it. Yeah, yeah, and so I understand that it's it's not necessary, but what it does is point to that there's a thing underneath there that you you want to get rid of. You want to resolve this negative vibration that's inside your body, and all she did was trigger something that was already existing. It's not hers. You didn't get hers. Hers just was, or hers or him, whoever it was. Mm -hmm. You're just reacting to that, and and it's such such a useful thing. It's like. Um, if you have a version to wind, I'm just trying to think of another story so you can understand how this works. If you have a thing called internal wind, you have a wind inside your body. Now, Chinese medicine, internal wind is an energetic thing that goes in your body and attacks the nervous system. It likes to get the nervous system, the muscles, causes um, spasms, causes twitches, causes um, or strokes, liver wind causes strokes. So it can cause any muscular dis disturbance and nervous disturbances cause it could cause all of these things. But if you have wind inside your body, if you go out in the wind, it, it'll amplify the wind you already have. So you won't want to be in the wind. If people that have heard, are listening to this and they'll listen to this later and they'll understand that. If you're, you're the person that has a wind person, you'll have a whole wardrobe of scarves to keep yourself, you will hate the wind around your neck. You won't like it. And you know who I'm talking to. You'll have a whole wardrobe of scars because the thought of having wind on your back and neck oh, is horrible. So what it is, you have already have the wind inside you, energy, the wind energy inside you. And the external one is just triggering something you already have in your body. That's why you won't like it because it's amplifying something that already exists. Now, you can get rid of wind. There's Chinese herbal formulas to get rid of wind out of your body. What you want to get is out is um, acupuncture points to get rid of wind out of your body because you don't want wind in the body. Wind that attacks the nervous system, you get a lot of pain from the wind. It moves around the body, you get a sore knee and then the next day you've got a sore elbow and then you've got a sore neck and because it moves like the wind in your body but it always causes pain. And so you want that out of the body because strokes are seen as a wind condition. So quite often when people have a stroke, I'll ask them, do you like the wind? And they hate it because it's quite symbolic in Chinese medicine to have a wind attack and that causes the stroke. So you don't want that in your body and you can get, as I say, you can get rid of it. But it's a good example of having something already inside you and reacting to something outside of you that's making it even worse because you're reacting to something you've already got. So I would imagine that the underlying piece that you had running in a low level inside your body somewhere, it just triggered it, which is really useful to you because now you can see that it's there. Now you can say, okay, well, I want to get rid of that. I, I don't want that in my body. And then you go to the source. Okay, so where is in my life that I have that feeling? Where do I have the discomfort? What triggers that discomfort in my life? What does it bring up? And, and you probably would have, inside the workshop, you would have probably, inside, when you come out, you would have felt the thing that's driving it anyway. You, it would have triggered a memory. It would have triggered a situation. It would have triggered somewhere else where you felt this. And that's where the cause of it was coming from. So there's some undealt with stuff to all to go, which is really useful to you because it's giving you an example of what it is because you don't want it because it is running in the back. And <laughs> you, don't, you don't want it because it's going to cause you discomfort. Yeah, something like that anyway, Judy. I don't know if, if that's useful to you. We can go and talk more deeper, but I don't really want to go too much into the personal diagnosis of this, but more about understanding the principle of the energy as a reaction to theirs and then it's bringing attention to yours, which is more important. They can do what they like, <laughs> but what you do with yours, that's your choice. Now, that's a different thing. Yeah, so hopefully that's useful. Is there questions about that? Yeah, no, it, it's useful because... Um... Yeah, I did leave there feeling negative for another reason as right. well. 
so I think that culminated and sort of, you know, put my thought processes into overdrive, if you like, thinking, well, yeah, you know, that's great. I, I was, yeah, I sort of had that there and that there, but yeah. Yeah, I, that's great. That's that's cool because you said so you left because there was another part of it that triggered another part of the negativity. Well, that's good because now you know what it is. You've got to have a yeah. look at it. Yeah. It's useful because otherwise you go back home and you don't notice, you don't know it's running in the background. Exactly. You have this, this this dysfunction running in the, and I'd say dysfunction as an energetic disturbance. We say it in a nice way. It's an energetic disturbance running in the background, but you don't know it's running there. But it's causing you discomfort. It causes you to have out of balance in your health as well, which you won't know that. But when you go that, what it did is point at it. Get, well, what, what about that? <laughs> what about that, Jude? Did you see that? Do you want to deal with that? And so it's 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 really useful because you go, okay, there, there it is. There's the discomfort. And, and you might not realize how big it was or how much it was running in your life until you get to see it and go, oh, look at that. It's bigger than I thought it was. Okay, so I need to deal with that. Let's get rid of that. And that's, and that's highly useful. Workshops, courses, always good like that. They bring up the stuff, don't they? <laughs> that's very cool. Thanks for sharing with that. I really appreciate it because it takes courage to bring that into a, into a forum to talk about it. So thank you. And it's useful to everybody else as well. Yeah. Have you any more? Any more questions around that? No, it's all good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, and... yeah, no, it's good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the process around that, and 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 be. Anyway. And what I'd say to you, Jude, because I've just well, I've just met you, and I just saw you, and I'd say the big thing for you is just not to give yourself a hard time about this. Yeah. Because I think you, I think you might be good at that. And just as a guess, just as a guess, I don't know. I'm good with people. Maybe yeah. you just might want to beat yourself up a bit for that. And I would say, don't do that. Just know that we're not perfect and we uh, just have opportunity to learn and don't give yourself a beating for it. Absolutely. Be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? That might be helpful too. Thank you. That comes from yeah. my heart. My heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. thanks. And I take it. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to help people. People help me. They help me through the, some of the tough times in my life. And and they can see things quite often that I couldn't see. So it's nice to be able to give that back, play that forward to, and I have enough medical understanding now that I understand pretty much where everything comes from and to bring some light to that, to make life easy for people. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to share that anyway. So, But thanks for the opportunity to help you. <laughs> any more I just want to comment on what you've just spoken about for um, Judy's situation and my situation I feel like uh, you're, help, you're helping with us taking responsibility with what's going on within us rather hmm. than looking externally and being like I feel like I've taken something from somebody else Yes. So I feel like that has been a really key point that I've taken away from this conversation already is taking responsibility for the way that we are responding to outside circumstances. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you noticed that. <laughs> it was done on purpose. It was done on purpose. I, I, I want to speak to that. I want, I want to speak something because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important thing. It's important for, for us as it's a philosophical understanding. So in the monastery school that I teach from, there is 10 principles and there's, there's seven aspects in 10 principles. And the 10 principles, the first five of them are your relationship with nature, with the world, with, with heaven, whatever you perceive heaven is, <clears throat> and your relationship with that, the thing outside of yourself, and your relationship with the environment we live in. And, and the second five of the 10 principles are your relationship with other people, yeah? How you show up for other people, what you do. Some of them are, are truthfulness, honesty, respect. And this is what you do for other people, towards other people. None of those five that are to do with other people are about what other people do to you. It's about what you do to other people. So we're responsible for what we do to other people. What other people do for us has got nothing to do with us. We can react to that, but it's actually not our stuff. It's theirs. We're only responsible for the stuff we're giving out. 
we're giving the love, the care, the t- kindness, the regard, our reactions, all of that going out is what we do. How we how we show up as a human being to help and to nurture people, to help people outside of ourselves. But it's not about what we're getting from other people. That's got nothing to do with it. If we're looking for something from outside to come in to fill us up, it's, it's an incorrect way of doing it. We give it away, and that's what fills you up. But if you're always looking for something to fill your heart up to make you feel good, you're always going to get hurt. You're always going to get let down because they won't be able to give you what you want because what you want, they can't give you. Only you can give it to yourself. And so the focus is on about what we're doing ourselves, what, what our choices are, how we go outward, not having expectations of what's meant to come back. Yeah, and, and I think we, and I've done this myself, I make mistakes where I think that people should react a certain way. <laughs> people should be like that. They should act like that. They should be more responsible. They should do that. Yeah, but they aren't. People can do whatever they like, but I'm responsible for what I do how I am respectful to people, how kind I am, how honest I am, how generous I am. I'm responsible for that. What other people do with that and that coming back, he's got nothing to do with me. But while I have expectations that they should be doing something, I'm giving all my power to them because now I'm going to react if they don't do what I think they should do. And it's a trap to fall into as a human being to do that and have expectations that they're meant to be somehow making me feel better. Well, don't do that. And so the, these both these, these cases, and I think you both heard that, it's about our reaction to other people and how we are responsible for that. They can do whatever they like. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> people do whatever they like. And, and it, it's about, it's difficult. It's difficult because we, we're born, I mean, I was born up having lots of judgment <laughs> about people. Oh, my mum, God bless my mum, she's not here anymore, but my mum taught me how to be very judgmental of people and have lots of expectations about how they should behave. <laughs> and lots of judgment on when they don't do that. And I realised it took me a long time and my teacher said to me, says, why do you think people should behave like that? Who told you that that's you, that you're right and they're wrong? I said, well, that's it, but because there's right ways of doing things, is wrong. I said, yeah, up to you doesn't mean it is to them and I go oh no that's not good <laughs> I think everybody should do what I do I'm right and everybody else should know what I what right is and of course you crash with that don't you because <laughs> it just doesn't work because people have different points of view and then I realized what I thought was right sometimes wasn't even totally right anyway <laughs> it was very biasly right it wasn't right at all it was just a point of view and I realized that sometimes they wasn't even remotely right, as I said, no, I had to change my opinion <laughs> and eat a lot of humble pie and forgive myself and forgive other people for not being what I thought they should be, <laughs> including partners and children and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I owe to be that perfect myself. Eh? <laughs> anyway, hopefully that's useful anyway. I don't know. I just, I just throw it out there. We're responsible for what goes out. Whatever comes back, you're responsible for your reaction. <laughs> or not <laughs> don't react and then there's no pain if you don't have any expectation coming in you don't react and there's no pain you just give it away <laughs> hey there, i've got a um oh go kerry re- welcome Hello. Kerry. um i've got some research that or well, not that i do personally but they did research into kids in foster homes neglected kids and what they found was if they gave them an animal, a pet, to love, that had far greater um, effect on them than being given love. Hey, so pe- giving out the love themselves, yeah. Was, exactly. Exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. If the power is giving it away. That, that what keeps you, what really, really opens your heart and what really fills you up is giving it away, not taking it in. It's, it's the opposite. We've been, we've been taught of the, what's in it for us. You know, what can we yep. get? What can we get? But it's actually what you give. What do you give it away? It's, it's, um, here, it talks about a story, but I think I told the story of the last two years. Chip, I'm going to say the same story. Thank you for sharing that, Kira. I don't mean to cut you off, but, but I think that's a, it's such a valuable understanding of that. And they, they showed you by the kids showing love to an animal made them feel good. It wasn't the animal loving them. It was them giving it away. And it's just a totally different thing. And sometimes we're talked 
philosophy wise and, and through society and through TV, you see it on TV all the time, which is annoying that people are out there looking for love and people give them love and they go, oh, they really love me. But it's, a, it's not true. It's, it's an illusion. And why you keep looking for it outside of yourself in the movies, you always see people looking for something outside. And when they, and they get and they in the movies, they get it from outside and it makes them feel good. So then they teach you that, oh, that's what I'm meant to be doing. I'm meant to be looking outside for something to make me feel good. And the movies show you that, but it's incorrect. It's incorrect energetics. It doesn't work that way because more when you want somebody to give you something and they don't give it the way you want it, you're just going to be upset with them. You, you, <laughs> your conditions on your love, you need to give it away. It's bizarre. Anyway, I wanted to talk about a story. And I think I've said this story before last time, so I'm going to say it again. I had my teacher gave me a beautiful example of this one day, and he said, he said, Pete, he said, I was really down. I, I was I was quite depressed. I, I mean, we all go through the depression time in our life. I've had the depression feeling. I know what that feels like. It's not nice. So when you want to sit at home and you wish the world would just sort of end and go away. And I talked to my teacher and I was just having a real bad space. And he said to me, he says, what I want you to do is bring up, bring up somebody that you know talks a lot. And when you ask them how they are, they'll talk on for hours and hours about themselves. And I want you to ring them. I, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> and I immediately thought of who the person was. And it's, and it's, a, it's, it's gender neutral because it doesn't matter who it was, but it just happened to be a woman. <laughs> it's, it doesn't make any difference about the gender, but I'm just going to say because I'm going to say her. So I, I rang her up and, and what he said was, yeah, I'm not allowed to talk about myself. I'm not allowed to talk about my own misery. I've just got to ask her how she is. And I go, oh, I know this is going to be tough. So I thought, oh, this guy's he's been around a lot longer than me. He's a bright guy. I'll I'll follow him. And so I I rang her up and I said, How are you going? And she said, Oh, fantastic. And she says, and I said, So what have you been up to? And she said, Oh, my, oh, my kids aren't really well at school. My, my partner's not good, and we have this. And she must have talked about half an hour about everything that was wrong. And I was sitting there going, Oh, okay, okay. And then she said, So how about you? And I said, No, things are okay. So how's your kids? And I went straight back to her again. How's your kids? She said, well, my kids are good. They're doing this and they're doing that. And I'm running around like a mother. I, you know, I have to do so much. I said, but you're really good at doing that. She said, oh, yeah, but, but I, you know, I said, oh, it's good. I said, you're, you're really positive. You, you get things done. I really appreciate that. She said, oh, yeah, yeah. And by the time we finished the conversation, I spent the whole time talking about her and listening to what she wanted to say and nothing about me. And when I finished, I said, well, it's just been lovely chatting. She said, oh, I just love to chat. Thank you so much for calling. I feel so good. And it's just been really lovely to talk. Let's talk again. So, yeah, yeah, sure. And I hung up and I, and I thought, hung up those days. We had phones which you could hang up, not sort of click off. <laughs> exit. <laughs> had exit. We had a phone. They had, actually, I go back to when we had these ones, these dolls like this. That's how, that's how old I am. It's quite scary. And so I hung up and I sat there and I go, damn, I feel really good. I said, I didn't talk about me the whole time. I talked about her. I listened to all the negativity that she was going on in life. And I, I, I've told her how good she was at she doing things and what she did. And I felt incredibly good. And I, and I went back to the teacher. I said, how can it be so easy? He said, because you're giving it away. You're not trying to get something. I said, well, how does that work? He said, because when you give it away, the energy comes through you and goes to them. So you get to feel this energy coming through you and going out. So it makes you feel good. But when you're trying to get it from other people, you're trying to get it through their filter to you and it's murky. It comes through by the time it gets you, it's all blurry. But when you get it directly going straight out, it's clean. You get to keep some of it. Well, that's a great way of looking at it. And so it's about a year later, I, I got into a place where I was depressed again. And I, and I got into a place where it's a bit dark again. I go, oh, no. And you know what he said? He says, I think you should ring that woman again. I said, oh, no, not again. It was harder the first time. I said, yeah, but how'd you feel? I said, I felt good, but I still got to. He said, no, bring her again. So I, I rang her up and says, how are you going? She says, oh, it's good to hear from you. We haven't heard from you for about a year. She says, oh, it's so, it's so good to hear you. I said, I said, what have you been up to? And she tells me all about lives and about the kids. We talk about the kids, their job and everything else. And she asked me, how are you going? I said, oh, I'm fine. So, so what's going on with your, with your work at the moment? And just go back to you straight away. And she finished. She was saying, oh, God, I love the conversation we have with you. It's just, it just makes me feel so good. I said, oh, it's welcome. Great, great to chat with you. Hang up. And I go, 
damn, it worked again, didn't it? I feel fantastic. It can't be this easy. You, you cannot just make it that easy by giving it away and want nothing back from somebody. And I went back to it and, he, and I had a smile on my face and he says, you rang it, didn't you? And I said, yeah, I did. I said, why is it so easy? Because you're giving it away again. Because it comes through you pure and it goes out clean. And I go, oh, no. I said, I'm a bit slow, aren't I? He says, yeah, yeah, but it's all right. It only took you two times to work it out. I said, I used to be about two. I get it after two. So I'm passing that on because the energy goes that way. It's what how you are the five aspects of the school is what you give to other people it's that your relationship with other people is not their relationship with you it's your relationship with them what you do and when you do that it's a very different thing and you not have the expectation of coming the other way and when you're looking at it coming the other way it's always going to be blurry by the time it gets to you and it's never going to be what you want because it's never going to be as perfect as the way you, you think it should be but you're in charge of how perfect it is when it goes out so hopefully that's useful anyway. Great story. But I mean, they, they were clever, these guys. These, these, the, the monks in the monastery school, they, they, their philosophy, how they saw life was so clever. I was talking to Josie, my wife, this morning in bed. We were sitting there just chatting away. We, we have philosophical conversations in the morning before we get out of bed. And we were talking about this. And it's like this, this, this simple, the simpleness is in our life. The simple things can be the most beneficial things and the things we love the most but they don't have to be huge things they can be really simple and it's not they don't have to be huge big energetic things where you get adrenaline rushes everything it can be a really simple thing by just doing one thing to help somebody and it makes you feel good simple thing a simple thing i, I go to a supermarket and i'll, I'll get my groceries and then i'll i'll pay for the grocery i turn around and say thank you for that and you have a great day and she goes oh okay but when I said that, I said that and I actually meant it. I didn't say it as a throw off comment. Oh, have a good day, walk off. I actually said, and have a great day. And she goes, oh, he actually meant that. <laughs> and I say that and I walk off. I feel her go, Poof, change energetically. And I don't know how that affects a person. I don't do it for any reason, only that I just give it away because I can. And it's really that simple. But it took me a couple of times to work this out. I'm a bit slow sometimes picking it up. <laughs> anyway, and we talk about that and about how we can just do that. How, how can you come from a place where you're conscious and you're bringing people to be more conscious instead of being down there moaning and grizzling about what's going on in the world and you come from a place where you look down and say, how can we do this better? How can we work together to make it this better? instead of coming from a place of complaints or coming from a place of negativity, how can we say, okay, well, how can I do this better? From a different, very different place, different place of consciousness.